you and I have talked about your, your earlier days and, and, you know, the way things started and Man. those broke days when you go home and you pay a few bills. And yeah. I guess like it's, 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 uh, it's like a long journey, but it also goes by real fast in some ways, I bet. Like, how do you feel about, uh, like, this is going to be your 10th fight now in, in Vegas, if, uh, officially, not not counting the, the tough fights. It's, it's going to be officially your 10th trip to Vegas. Like, how do you feel about that? Uh, that's awesome. How do you feel about, about what's happened? You know, you're, you're, you've had a very unique UFC career. How do you feel about it to this point? Uh, nobody's like that. Nobody's, nobody's doing what I'm doing, which is cool. And it's an honor to be able to uh, have seen from Fuel TV to Spike to you know, like to, what the f*** was that, Fox, to ESPN, to Disney, to now the UFC doing their own f***ing thing, seeing behind the scenes, being there left and right, and then pulling through with pandemic, losing my f***ing belt, and then gaining it, and there's just like all this ups and downs, at least it hasn't been left or right. I signed up with the UFC with the intent to be able to be a CEO one day, like to be able to have like a part of the company as an owner, because when you show that much loyalty, Something like that. You don't expect it. You earn it. And you earn something like that by working hard. You know, you're putting the hay in the barn before you go out. You know, in the winter time, everybody's still struggling to get everything going, but you're already prepared. And I've done that so many times, Bailey Hay, and doing all these little jobs where I knew that I didn't want to do that forever. I want to be able to do that and to enjoy it. But this has been not even a bumpy ride. It's been life which I'm very cool with, start at the mail room to where I'm at now. So it's, it's dope. That's, that, that was a goal of yours from the very beginning was to uh, get a piece of this, of the UFC company? It, it wasn't it. a piece of it. It was just to be a big part of it. And I remember watching UFC 1 with my pops, and I remember him in a tough man contest. And just, I've always wanted to be a fighter, and I would, I'm not saying I could tell the future and stuff, but I'm pretty good with, you know, just understanding things and played enough sports and knowing where the plays are going to go that way i have an understanding of what i have to do to get to where i need to go and i'm going to be real yeah i've always had these big hopes and dreams and then seeing the mansion and being there i walked right out and said i'm home and if i didn't have that visualization and living in it i would not expect myself to have to be able to want something that grand um it doesn't have to be a mansion but the living into there it's do you want something like this or do you yeah, I want something as grand. And it doesn't have to be monetarily or, or an object. But the point of living like that, and I told my wife, I was like, we can go two ways. We can be loud and obnoxious and make a whole bunch of money and just kind of not be hated, but be people weird with all these cameras and kind of just hiding shit. Or we can be humble and be super chill and people will be more respectful towards us. And I knew that already because my dad had taught me that when I was little. He was like, you make a lot of noise, you know you're going to get a lot of noise. But you work really hard and you do this the right way. Mom was the same way. You work your ass off, and that way you don't quit. The same thing you've always done. At this point in your career, what do you think you are to the company? Like, there's, there's, there's prospects, and there's contenders, there's champions, and then there's guys that like, like, what do you, what do you think your value is to the company? You, I'm gonna see this off. I'm gonna, see, I'm the chief security officer. I make sure that that flies when they know that. And when Trump was calling Dana, I love to hear saying this. When Trump was calling Dana, and Dana was calling me to get sports back on in the world. You know, even before that, I made that weight. It wasn't for anybody. And the funny thing was, is I, you know, I really didn't say, share this too many people, is I had a bunch of potato chips and snacks. Because I bought that, because after Khabib left, I was like, I'm going to just, you know, I'm just going to eat stress, stress eat. And I said, fuck it, I'm going to make weight. But then on that Sunday, I said, I'm going to make it harder for myself. I've always made things really hard for myself when I've always got really stressed out. It's kind of like really self-defeating kind of shit. But I've always, it always made me like more humble. And I almost died, bro. It was fucking the most craziest shit on Thursday night. And uh, I got to like 183 and a half and I cut to 155 in four days. Like three, yeah, three and a half, four days. And that point, I never take knees in practice. I don't ever take a knee, you know, it airs up. And that night I took a knee and God was like, you're gonna chill a little bit. He's like, you're getting too much up there. You're going to chill the f*** out. And I took that, and I ended up making weight that morning, so it meant a lot to me, which was <clears throat> was pretty hard. But I've gotten to the point where um, I don't want to make it that hard anymore. Pretty crazy. 
You're talking about the the cut where the, the, for the actual fight or the cut for for the just to put it on social media. Like, uh, yeah, still made it. No, it was for me. It wasn't for anybody. But what I did was I recorded. It. I didn't know it was going to be the only thing on ESPN. It was the only f-ing sport thing that was on ESPN that whole day. I don't think that's ever happened in the world. You know, from the paper people and the in the to whatever. No, this was the very first thing. And it, it gave people some sort of hope or inspiration, whatever the f*** it did. I didn't, that wasn't my intention. My intention was to give myself hope because I had put so much time and energy into whatever that was, preparing for whoever it was. It was to let it go, be done with it. And I recorded it, and then it f***ing went on. It was cool as shit. Everybody reached out, and they were like, hey, you know, are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? I did it. You know, I got to meet a cool friend, you know, which is super dope. And I didn't think anything other of showing toughness or strength because I've always made weight. I got one time have I ever missed weight. I made it, missed weight maybe one time in like, fuck, like middle school, high school. And that was it. Because it, to me, it was just a big deal just to, to, to show up and do your f-ing work. I know you have a lot of pride with, with uh, to, to get fights back on during the pandemic. Huh. Do you almost feel like uh, you you made a sacrifice that like because nothing's been the same for you since then? Is there a feeling like that that you sacrificed something to to get sports back on? Uh I play chess a lot, a lot of myself too. Just kind of flip the board and kind of keep playing. Yeah, yeah. Because then what you're doing is you're your own challenger. If you know that nobody's up to par with you, you don't you don't I had to learn this again. You don't put yourself to everybody else's level. My experience has gotten me through a lot. I put it that way. And so when the pandemic hit, it was nothing. When Dana actually called me up, I forwarded his ass to voicemail because I was out skateboarding with my cousin. And because he knew already, I was like, he, no, my cousin's like, aren't you gonna answer that? I was like, no, he knows I'm gonna say yes. And it's making sure that you do stuff to just do stuff like it's it becomes an automatic you know like i don't know i got big shoulders i got wings so. what other ways do you think over your course of your career do you think you've made it harder on yourself when you said that sometimes you have a, a tendency to do that oh uh, i think that during the pandemic uh with Oliveira, i didn't practice i practiced maybe jujitsu like half the time i just took all these opportunities just to stay competitive to get Khabib, blue or men so he would think that i wasn't as tough I call it sandbagging. And in ultimate reality, I've been sandbagging for uh, almost 20 fights. Like putting everything in it that I possibly could. This fight, this camp, I have put an endless <laughs> amount of effort into it. I could still do more. And I'm like 39 years old and everybody calls me washed up. I'm like, yeah, I'm damn fucking straight. I'm cleaned up, bitch. Washed up to me means you, I just... I shed everything. You know, I got a sports psych, which is cool as f-. He said the same thing. Even my, one of my trainers, my, one of my guys, I closed my distance between people. There's no more hugs for everybody. There's no more brother this and everything that. No, it's my f-ing close circle. It's my wife, my kids, and my team. And if everybody else can't accept that, then f*** them. They don't belong here. As I chief, uh, Explain it to me and some things, and I had to uh, not say bye. I had to set it aside for a second because that should be there when I'm done with this stuff. But to accept that I had so much going on, put so much pressure on myself with pandemic and all of that, that I couldn't let it go. I thought I had to keep doing this. A lot of business partners going in there, taking the mold and psh, taking this juice and going over there. And I had to say goodbye because now they they don't. That's all they got. They want to come back in here. F- no, f- you done. Can't, sorry, excuse me. Not sorry, but f- off. <laughs> yeah. Plain and simple. And uh, no more pressure. It's cool now. Like, I feel good. A great camp. You know, UFC 296 this weekend. It's been uh, an eye opener for me because uh, if my wife didn't send me the text, it says, I don't see you smiling when practice anymore. I don't see, and it wasn't like, uh, are you sure you want to do this? No, or she knows me. I don't see you smiling in practice anymore. You're not smiling as much as you would at home. You do, you're not smiling when you're fighting. It doesn't seem like you're enjoying this. If you would have told me, I probably would have been like, F- 
off or like no way if no no i'm doing this you know this and just having just whatever i would have in that saying no sitting here trying to cipher a text and i end up deleting it because i'm like damn it like you're right crazy and that meant a lot more to me because i couldn't say anything back so i went and did it started asking for help started getting out of my own comfort zone mind you and i haven't done that since grand valley state wrestling and that's taking a chance and going helping somebody that uh needed some help and that gave me a scholarship what does it feel like to have all these people saying that you are washed up in your own words that you just said what what does it feel like they must be new around here that's how it feels i'm not gonna say hold up brothers you know but they're they're new they don't understand my background and i had to understand my own where I come from and what I've been through and the experiences that I have to not even give a f about anybody. You blocked some, I blocked so many f people. I've had so many death threats from you, the Russians and everything with Khabib. Yeah, like I, I had to learn Russian to, to curse at them in their own language. And what ended up happening was I made a lot more supporters from around the world by keep showing up, keep doing this, and then having a joke about it. You know, teasing Khabib and Connor, calling the same name for years, and German Suit Tuesdays and McNugget Mondays are just there. They're never going away. Are you over not getting the Khabib fight, or is that something you just don't think you'll ever get? He's still my bitch. And that is, I scared the f out of that Dagestani guy. Nothing against everybody else in the country. Just met a dude over here today, took a picture. But I scared the death out of him. I'm not saying it's a war between our religions and everything like that, but I got that guy's number and he knows that he loses, he can't go back home. Is there any feeling going into this fight where it's like, uh, I would just think from the outside, it's like, this kid doesn't even deserve to be here. Like, I, I, he has no idea. Like, I, the Ooh, things Patty? I've gone through, Ooh, you think about what he's done. Patty? Yeah, is there is there that feeling going into this? You know what, I'm still a chef and I call him Patty Cakes. So this mother patty cake, patty cake, baker's mother fucker, I'm gonna kick your ass. Like, there's no being nice. You know, with the Landon fight, I, I tried to be nice and he dotted me and I got pissed. I had to put him away, like, you little bastard. Like, you know, cool, hey Landon, you know. But no, I'm not with this dude. You know, this America motherfucker. You're gonna come into my country and you're gonna try to be laughing against me and try to put me down? I don't fucking think so. I'm a tough motherfucker, exactly. I love the Star Spangled Banner, dude. Like, you have no idea. Like, America the Beautiful and all these songs that I have learned in school, saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Like, these Stars and Stripes, and dude, they mean so much more to me than anybody else. Not for any other reason besides myself, because bef before every competition, baseball, football, basketball, wrestling, like, soccer, like, all these sports I've played, it was always before then. And I remember at uh, TFA over in Long Beach when we had a fight. They actually played it, and I was like, yeah, I had my Grand Valley sweatshirt on, and I hadn't heard that in so long, and it brought back something in me, which was cool. And at Vegas Strong, when we, you know, when that happened, when I won the belt, yeah. it played it then, and it was just, I just love that thing, and it means a whole bunch to me, dude. Military, I've been something else, so it was just different. So that's the UFC, if they'll, if they'll play it before your walkout. That doesn't even matter, man. I'm going to be real. Like, I have it in my head. I have it in my heart, and this mother is going to be falling apart right in front of me. Yeah. I mean, speaking of military, obviously the David Goggins thing, it, it, the internet took notice of that. <laughs> Can you talk about uh, how that came together? I was very cool. Uh, good friend of mine. Pretty awesome. It was the hardest shit I've ever been through. It was exactly what I need. Everything else is classified. But I'm going to be real, it was the coolest experience. He's right here, which is cool as and, You know, it, it lead off because... It didn't just start with, with Chief. It started with one of my trainers too, and even before Anna started with my friend Cisco, and even before Anna started with my wife, asking for help. And it just kept on volleying. It kept on going. That ball never dropped. And with that training and being over there and showing up, I felt like I showed up at my father's foot like doorstep again. And it's a funny thing, like just a backpack, not knowing what the f I was gonna do, and just kind of just showed up and be like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, coach. Yes, sir. And not asking any questions besides what's for breakfast. No, like kind of because I knew I had to know what I was going to eat because it was going to throw up. <laughs> so, he was like, hey, what, are you, what, are you, what are you eating, sir? I would look at him and be like, uh, breakfast, you know, that might be able to keep that down. 
And that was the most question I had was just wondering how I was going to keep food down. Nothing else. And just showing up and making sure that I knew. And it was an honor. It was cool as f And um, as soon as it got done, I drove my ass off because I, I heard that my kid was going to have the closing ceremony for football. So it's, it was, it's just been icing on top of icing on top of icing on top of fucking just it's been amazing but i had to make that choice do i want to fucking sit here and mope and try to take another loss because i'm accepting whatever is coming my way or am i gonna fucking work my ass off carry my own cross let everybody else carry theirs and do my own fucking thing and then work and earn it like it's been fucking awesome like you know uh, Goggins has been a big part of my life. Like it's been cool to be able to no kiss and ass, no nothing. It's all about respect. So when he says he put you through a hell week, is that like a military hell week? As like as we know it with the Navy SEAL stuff? It was not easy. It was not easy. I'm gonna tell you. Um, took everything I had, and then some. But what it did was it brought a whole new animal out of me. It brought me back to me which is what it is. And like I said, I didn't ask any questions. I just, I knew I needed it. You know, I'm very fortunate because I was going to ask him for help. But we we kind of had the same vibe. We knew what the f*** we needed, what needed to happen. And we made it happen. And we're here this weekend at UFC 296 in Las Vegas. We're fighting at the T-Mobile Arena. Get a plug. And uh, mother get your tickets because there's going to be f fireworks. What was uh, what did you think about the reactions to it? People's reactions to you going through that? I was cool as shit. I I didn't I'm, I'm telling you like I my, I've been so focused on Patty, like hitting pad work, going to strength and conditioning, you know, coming home happy. So I'm not training people to train me. That has always been the the, the craziest thing because I had all this energy, but I had to be nice to people. Overly nice open boundaries and doing business and going to school and wanting to be a doctor and all these dreams and hopes. And I had to kind of get trained again at a very, very, very high level. And I'm not done yet. I have a goal, which I want to accomplish. I don't have to say it too loud, but it's going to take this fight first. And once I get through this, then we'll see. What happens if this fight doesn't go the way you want? It's going to go the way I want. I already visualized it. I trained my ass off for it. I don't see this kid beating me. He's worried about me blocking him on Instagram. Sensitive little bastards. Wait till you get cut and you start to see your own blood. You're going to run out of cage back to mommy. When you said earlier, uh, am I going to like fight back? Am I going to go through this Goggins thing? Am I going to, to, to train like I need to or am I going to accept it? At any point over the last six losses, did you feel like you were accepting the like, defeat? No, it's just taking fights so that way I can get Khabib to come back. And we almost coached against each other. So he took the bait. But something happened to him. So something different where he didn't even go coach Islam. So it took a lot for him to not want to be able to show up. Interesting, but like I said, I know I'm front and back. I have a full dossier on this dude and hunting him down. I told him a hit, man. You're only gonna make it out of the cage. Last thing for me is, what what, what, do you, what are we gonna see? What what are we going to see? I mean, you you've had you had so much success, and then obviously you've had a hard road the last couple of years. Like, what are we gonna see in the octagon with you and Patty Pimlet? I'm gonna hurt this kid. I'm gonna hurt him bad. I don't have anything against him, but damn it, he's in my way. And. uh I don't have too much to say about him, and be real. He's an opponent. I'm going to turn his head red. Pretty much it.